Welcome to Offshore Surveying. Today in this video, we will discuss and break down how we carry out dockside calibration for GNSS and for gyro compass step by step. Dockside calibration is for those vessels which are sailing for a long time and a long distance from one continent to the another to carry out some offshore works. Now gyro compass, they drift over a long period of time and your new field geodesy and the augmented system may be completely different. So the vessels that wants to work there must calibrate their system as per that present position. So today in this video we will discuss about planning, preparation and what to do in the field in step by step process and we will also discuss about various different other methods that you can adopt to do a dockside calibration. So without further ado, let's start. So let's start with preparation before going to the dock. Number one, find out about the vessel length, width and freeboard. This is going to be very important because as per that you need to plan how you are going to place all your equipment. We'll discuss about it little later. Number two, find out the GNSS and gyro systems on board the vessel. Next find out if the gyro compass and GNSS system can give you output to your laptop for logging the data. What kind of connector is required 232 or 422? If they cannot give any output to you then you must ask if they can log the data internally and give you the data. Find out where the vessel is coming alongside and if that jetty have a recent ground control point. If not, you need to establish a few ground control points on the jetty itself. Let the vessel master know that the vessel has to be surveyed from both the port side and the starboard side and the vessel has to turn around 180 degree after completion of one side of the survey. Let's now talk about the equipment that is required. First of all, you need at least two DGNSS system and the accessories that goes with it. Plus you need couple of laptops. You need a total station and with couple of prisms with a prism pole and maybe a few reflective tapes. You also need a laptop for logging the vessel data. You might just need a laser distometer, it will be very useful if you have it. You also need a 30 meter measuring tape. Next let us discuss what you need to do just before you do the calibration. First have a kickoff meeting with the vessel crew and the vessel master and set up your laptop with all the incoming data from the GNSS system as well as the gyro compass. Make sure that the data coming to your laptop is good. Next or simultaneously, you need to establish at least two ground control points on the jetty at a convenient place. Remember, the vessel's GNSS antenna and the full length of the vessel must be visible from both the stations and there has to be a line of sight between the stations that you are creating. You have to make sure that the stations are clear from any traffic and it is not going to be disturbed during the course of survey and the ground control points must be minimum of 30 meters apart the far the better so first mark the station with a proper marking set up your dgnss antenna and start observation for a minimum four hours of period I suggest that you carry out a mean position as well as a Rhinex observation for the full 4 hours. Now next thing is very important. You need two of the guys to go on the vessel and measure the vessel from beam to beam and mark the center line of the vessel and set up two offset points, one at the bow and one at the stern. And the line between those offset points must be parallel with the vessel center line. Now I suggest that you do a dry run with your total station to shoot at the vessel's GNSS antenna and see if you are getting a reflection back and you are able to do the distance measurement. 
If not possible, then you should stick a reflective sticker on the GNSS antenna or very close to it. But please note that you will be working at height, so please wear a harness and take all the necessary precautions before you climb up to the GNSS antenna. Now with all these setups, we are now ready to carry out the actual calibration. So first thing first, start logging your vessel's GNSS and heading data into your laptop at every one second. Next, ask two surveyors to hold two prisms on the offsets that you made on the vessel on the bow and on the stern. Let them hold the prism on those two points. Make sure that the prism pole is completely vertical. Then set up your total station at one of the ground control points and take the reference object to the next ground control point and shoot at the first prism. Now the process is that you need to shoot both the prism at bow and stern to find the angle and the distance. And you have to do that very quickly within 10 seconds of the time. You have to be very quick and everything depends on that. Once the bow and the stern prism readings are taken, now you can breathe. Next, you shoot the antenna, the GNSS antenna at the vessel. All these readings must not take more than a minute and that is one complete set of reading. My suggestion is you take minimum 50 sets of such readings. The more, the better. Once the first set of 50 or so readings are taken, stop the logging on board the vessel. Ask the vessel master to turn around the vessel 180 degrees. Remember, you have taken 50 sets of data. So you have the liberty to delete some of the data. 30 data in a report is good enough. You have to make sure that all these data are falling within a particular circle of error. If anything going beyond that, any out layer, you must delete that data and present only the best possible data or the best possible 30 sets of data. Okay, now that the vessel has turned around, it's time to go to work again. So do not forget to start the logging on board the vessel before you do any total station observation. So next, you take another 50 sets of data. So once your observation is complete, take all the data from the vessel and say sayonara to the captain. Now here you can stay on board the vessel, have your dinner, complete all the calculation and give the report to the master. Or you can come back to your hotel or to your base and do the calculation, let it go through a QC check, let one of your surveyor do the QC of your data and then you can give the data, present your data to the captain. It all depends on how quickly the vessel master wants the data and they want to set out for the field. Okay, it's not going to be as easy as I described. So please prepare yourself and practicing will give you a big advantage. So what are the problems that you are going to face? First of all, the area may not be clear to set up your ground control point. The jetty may be too low to look up at the vessel deck where you are going to set up your prisms. Next, the vessel might be full of equipments and cranes and there is no good way to find the center line of the vessel. And third most important thing is that the vessel might be moving a little bit here and there. So whatever you are observing, may still have certain errors into your observation. One problem that I myself have faced that the you cannot take any output from the vessel system and the vessel crew doesn't know how to log the data internally or take out the data and give it to you. That's a big problem. There can be millions of things that can adversely affect your survey. Now, as a surveyor, it is your job to understand the job completely and able to communicate to the client so that your job is much easier. I'll never say that it is going to be easy. It is not. But you are a surveyor, right? It is our job to finish what we need to do against all adversary. You have to think out of the box and maybe sometimes need to pull a rabbit out of the hat to carry out the job. Now there are multiple other ways you can do this same job. 
I will list out few different things here for you to understand. Now, whatever you do, the client must agree with your proposals. So do not just go and do the job your own way without taking the client in confidence. So let me give you some example. Use two total stations simultaneously from both the GCP and shoot at both the prism posts at the same time. And this will be a very good data for you to calculate the vessel's heading. Now you actually do not need to shoot the GNSS antenna on board the vessel. You can set up your DGNSS antenna very close to the vessel's GNSS antenna and then do the simultaneous observation to find the C-O. Next a quicker way, find the jetty alignment from the chart or from any historical data. Set up two reflective boards along the alignment of the jetty near the bow of the vessel and at the stern of the vessel. Now from the vessel using a laser distometer, take the distance from two offset points that are perpendicular parallel to the vessel's fore and aft line and that way you can find the horizontal distance. Another quick way to do that, set up two DGNSS antenna, one at the bow, one at the stern at the vessel center line and carry out simultaneous observation for at least one hour. Take every minutes of position data between the bow and the stern, convert them into grid bearing, apply convergence angle to make it an azimuth and then compare it with the vessel's gyro compass. Easy. And the last thing, if the vessel's sides are straight lines and parallel with the vessel's fore and aft line, you can use tape measurement from the jetty to measure the distance to the vessel side and that has to be carried out simultaneously. And it is the same way that you can do a gyro compass calibration for the vessel. But uh, what should you do? I suggest as a surveyor you do a statistical analysis of what gives you the best of the data and this process must be discussed and agreed upon with the client. So what now? As soon as you give your report to the vessel, they will apply the correction, the GNSS and the heading correction in their navigation software and they will go merrily on their way to the survey field. And you come back to the office with another successful project under your belt. And hopefully the surveyors with you have learned something new from you. Okay friends, in my next video, I will discuss how to carry out a dockside motion sensor calibration. So please remember to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Let me know in the comments if I have missed anything. If you have learned something new, please leave a thumbs up. Keep learning and always stay curious.